Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem cash O2. In this one, we are going to perform a bank reconciliation. All right, it looks like a lot, so don't be overwhelmed. Um, Blue Devil Corps had the following information related to cash for the month ended June 30th, 2020. Prepare the bank reconciliation to determine the correct cash balance they should report as of June 30th. So the problem's all here. I've got a blank slide that I'm going to work on as I walk through the solution. But with that said, I encourage you, um, if, if you're somewhat familiar with bank reconciliations, then pause the video, pull out your own blank sheet, try to do it yourself. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. Now I'm going to go over to my blank slide for just a minute. And I am going to go ahead and establish, um, we need two different columns to compare here. We need a bank and we need a book side of information. And so I, there's no rhyme or reason, like one doesn't have to be on the left and one doesn't have to be on the right. I'm, this is just the way they came to mind, bank on the left, books on the right. It could have been flip-flopped. And when I say books, what I really mean is that's the company's information, okay? Every bank reconciliation starts off with the same thing. And that is, what is the ending cash balance per those two sources, per the bank, per the books. If I go back and I look at my given info, you'll see here that I have a cash ledger balance, June 1st and June 30th, and I have a bank statement cash balance, June 1st and June 30th. Now, in this case, this is for the month of June, month ended June 30th. So those first two um, pieces of information for each one, cash ledger balance, June 1, and cash ledger balance, uh, cash balance per bank statement, June 1, that's unnecessary info. That's there to trick you. Like, you don't need that. What you need is ending cash because then you're going to make adjustments to figure out what the true ending cash should be. So I've scratched those two pieces of information out. Now, we do need the ending balances. So the cash balance per the ledger, 26000 That's end balance. Um, the cash balance per the bank statement, 24500 that's end balance. I'm gonna I'm gonna note these as we go, just so we can keep track of we, which each item is. And so we've now used that information. So I'm gonna scratch those out as well, simply to keep track of what have we used, what's left to use. Now, from here, the process of performing a bank reconciliation involves making adjustments to each of these ending balances, such that you come to a common ending balance on both sides that is your true balance once you combine the information from both the bank and the company together. Now, there's numerous reasons that you can have discrepancies between the bank and the books. And what I encourage students to do is start with the errors. And the reason I encourage that is because you're gonna have things that you calculate um, as fixes on the bank side, on the book side, maybe in some problems, maybe not in others, but there will be situations where the errors themselves affect other calculations you do. And so I say, just start with the errors. That way you can deal with all the other effects that the errors might have. So um, if I look over here, and, and I'm looking specifically for um, situations where there are errors, NSF check, outstanding check, bank fees, June 30th deposits. Oh, here we go. Look at that word, erroneously, right? Deposit erroneously put into Blue Devil Corps' account, $500. All right, when we're referring to Blue Devil Corps' account, what we're referring to is their bank account. And a deposit erroneously put in there means that $500 that is currently in the bank's balance should not be there. And so what we're going to do with that is we are going to subtract $500, and I'm going to call that bank error, and that's how we're gonna fix that error. That's how we're gonna deal with it is, okay, the bank balance is overstated because that, that deposit doesn't belong to us. So let's take it out. All right, I'm gonna scratch that one out. We've used it. And I'm gonna keep going down the list and see if I see any other errors. So checks cashed is fine, EFT collection fine. Oh, look, incorrect. There's another word for error, right? Incorrect journal entry for a $3,000 payment to a supplier. And notice the amount over here, 3,300 was what was recorded. So what's happening in this situation, I'm gonna come over here and just kind of scribble this in at the bottom. We'll move it later if we need to. But when you pay a supplier, um, typically 
the journal entry for that looks something like this. Either accounts payable cash, and in this case they said it was 3300 3, or let's say it's not a payable, let's say you're paying on the spot, then it would have been something like, oh, I don't know, um, supply... It would have been, oh, it said it was a supplier, right? So it would have been, oh, we bought supplies, right? So it could have been either one. Could have been AP, could have been supplies. It doesn't matter. The point here really is what's going on with this cash? Now, we credited cash, 3300 But what the problem tells us is that cash was actually only 3000 It was a $3,000 payment. So this is reducing our cash by 300 too much. So on the book side, to fix this, we add $300 back. I'm going to call this a company error. All right. We took $300 too much out of the cash ledger. We got to put that $300 back on the cash ledger. That's the book side. All right. That takes care of the errors at this point. So um, when I think about those errors, did they affect anything else? Well, this deposit put into the bank account by the bank. Um, that is going to affect the number of deposits the bank says that it uh, recorded. And in this situation, though, I don't actually have um, that information given to us, so that error is not going to affect anything here. And then this journal entry right here, um, this journal entry isn't really affecting checks or deposits, and that's really what you're looking for is do the errors affect checks or deposits? And in this case, it was just an incorrect journal entry. It didn't change the checks. Um, or the deposits, and so that error isn't going to affect anything either. So I know I told you do errors first because they might affect other things in the problem. In this case, they did not. But I'm sure I will have other videos where I have examples where they do. So with that said, let's go ahead and address everything else. Um, I'm just going to go in order uh, of the given information to make sure I don't overlook anything because there really is no specific order you have to go in. Um, first up, NSF check from customer. All right, so um, what this is saying is this is a bounce check. A customer paid us, or so we thought, and now we found out that they really didn't pay us. The check bounced. In this situation, um, the bank knows that the check bounced, so this is factored into the bank's uh, uh, balance. We're the ones that didn't know that this bounced, right? We find this out when we see the bank statement, and we see that the bank denied the check. So whereas we thought we had received $500 from a customer, we now find out that we never got that money, minus $500, NSF from customer. So we reduce our cash ledger because we never did receive that payment. Next up, outstanding checks. Now, here's where I keep things simple for you in this problem. Normally, a company has to calculate its outstanding checks that it's written. In this case, I gave it to you, and I said the outstanding checks were $10,000. An outstanding check is where the company knows it wrote a check. The bank has not processed that yet. Therefore, the bank doesn't know that that money is leaving the account. What that does for us on the bank reconciliation is this, minus 10000 Because that's going to come out of the bank balance eventually. The bank simply hasn't processed it yet. Outstanding checks. And we'll keep going. Next up, bank fees, 50 bucks. The bank charged us a fee of 50 bucks. The bank knows it charges a fee. That's in the bank balance. We're the ones who didn't actually take any activity. We didn't record this in our journal entries yet. Therefore, we need to subtract that 50 bucks from our side. Bank fee. All right, let's keep going. Looks like we have three uh, left. June 30th deposits not yet processed by the bank. So this could be a situation where June 30th was a weekend and we sent some deposits. And of course, being a weekend, the bank's not open. They haven't processed it yet, okay? This is what's known as a deposit in transit. So to the extent that there is a deposit in transit, we know we made the deposit. The bank balance doesn't include that deposit yet. So that $12,000, we are going to add to the bank balance, deposits in transit. Because it will get into the bank balance once the bank processes it. The current balance we have from the bank just doesn't reflect that yet. All right, brings us to our final two. So checks cashed by Blue Devil Core. 
47.50. Now notice here I say checks cashed by the company. So that implies that these are the deposits that the company received. Now normally you would need that information to calculate deposits in transit. In this problem though, we were given the deposits in transit. And so that piece of information is unnecessary in this particular problem. We can ignore it. Which leads us to our last piece of information, EFT collection from a customer. An EFT collection is where the bank collected money on your behalf. The bank knows that it collected that money. It's in the bank balance. It's not in your books yet because the bank did it for you. You found out when you saw the bank statement, but now we're reconciling. So we need to add that to our side, the company side, 250. And that is for the um, EFT collection. Now at this point, if we look, we've used all the information we were given, okay? Um, and so we're gonna tally these two sides up. And hopefully, if we've done everything right, they should come out to the same balance because now we have combined our information and the bank's information to make sure that we get the correct total set of information. So I'm going to pull out my calculator. And, uh, well, I guess I'll do the bank side first. It's shorter. 24,500 minus 500 minus 10,000 plus 12,000. And that's going to give us a bank ending balance of $26,000. Slide this over here, work on the books. So from the books perspective, we had 26,000 plus 300 minus 500 minus 50 plus 250, and that gets us to 26,000. Notice our two balances are equal. This is the true amount of cash that the company has as of June 30th. This is what the company will report on its balance sheet. Now, one thing I do want to point out, just so it doesn't cause confusion, notice on the book side, we had reported 26,000 to begin with, and 26,000 ended up being correct. However, it was not correct for the reasons we thought it was originally. Notice, we did make adjustments to the book side. It's just those adjustments canceled each other out in the positive and negative direction so that we wound up back at 26,000, okay? It wasn't that we were right all along. It's just we happened to wind up back where we started after adjusting. All right, that's it for Practice Problem Cash 02. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another.